Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo Technos product review. Bouge RV is yet another new solar panel lot for 2024. They're calling this one the Arch because it is a fiberglass solar panel that can be folded 270 degrees into an arch. It's also an ETFE coated panel, so it won't delaminate has a very extreme cold and heat range. It has a nice, tough, easy to clean surface and it's fully IP68 water resistant. But is it any good? Let's find out. All right, let's talk about some of the features of the Bouge RV Arch. First is its 10 bus bar design. You can see these groups of 10 bus bars. It's also 23% efficient, which is very good for a flex panel. Most flex panels aren't 23%. That's glass panel territory. One of the nice things about this panel is it's only 2.1 millimeters thin. You can see that when I do my folding test here. It weighs only seven pounds, so it's very lightweight, very thin. Inside this panel is a fiberglass core. So the core of this panel is fiberglass. Glass. Everybody knows how strong fiberglass is. It does have an ETFE coating. That's what makes it shiny. You can see the light reflecting off of it. That makes it waterproof. It makes it very durable. So you, it's very difficult to scratch this panel. And just to prove that to you, I have a screwdriver. It's not making, it's not making, oh, <laughs> it's not making any marks in this panel. I'm doing it right along this black stripe. You see nothing. So it's very durable, very scratch resistant, very easy to clean on top of that. So say you get some bird poo or whatever on there, you can wipe it right off. You can use regular Windex or any kind of glass cleaner on this to clean it. It's not gonna harm the surface at all. This is also IP68 waterproof. That is much better than IP65, which is most solar panels, and we're gonna show you that test. Now, between the water resistance and durability, this thing can handle high winds, snow loads, and hail with no problem. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and put the specifications up here on screen, some of the more important ones. It's 58 inches long by 31 inches wide. It runs a 20 volt VOC, which is a nice round number, so it's easy to to add up if you're figuring out if you're gonna do series or parallel connections. It also outputs just under 12 amps, 11.7. One of the best things about this style of panel with the fiberglass core is that it handles a very wide range of temperatures. It can handle all the way from minus 40 Fahrenheit up to 185 degrees Fahrenheit operating range. And many ask me about the heat resistance of these types of direct mount panels because you put these on a roof of your RV or van, they're gonna get the brunt of the sun plus the metal or whatever surface that you're mounting them to. I've done temperature checks in Phoenix and I've seen other people do them in Las Vegas in the middle of July and August. You'll get temperatures up to 160, 170 degrees on black asphalt surfaces. So this panel can handle that no problem. Again, up to 185 degrees, that's pretty darn hot. That's that's hot enough to cook an egg on. Another awesome thing about this panel is it's 10 year warranty. So they stand behind their products. You can see this thing will probably last you a very long time because of its durability. And they pretty much back that with that warranty. Now as for mounting options, it does have built in grommets around the ends. If you wanna do a mechanical attachment to a surface, the back of this panel is perfectly smooth. So you can use double-sided adhesive like VHB tape to safely attach to another smooth surface. Bouge RV does sell its own adhesive for this purpose. And the user manual for this panel, which you can download on their website, has full instructions on how to install it. And of course, we took the arch out of the secret lab into the unpredictable weather of monsoon season here in Arizona for some solar tests that took way too long to complete. As this time of the year, usually July and August, we have nothing but clouds and rain every single day. It literally took about a month just to do this video because the weather was so bad. Now, the first test I did was very brief. It was between clouds, but it was the most clear conditions we had in weeks. I literally only had a few minutes as you'll see. All right, sky conditions today. We're finally getting just over 1200, 1225 watts per square meter. So that's pretty good for my area and definitely pretty good looking at the sky conditions today. And we're getting 191 watts out of 200 for the Bouge RV. There goes the sun. Son of a bitch. Second test the following day wasn't as ideal, but we scored pretty good numbers. All right, solar incidence today is just over 1100 watts per square meter. This is about 200 watts per meter lower than normal for this area, but we do obviously have clouds. This is what we have today for sky conditions. 
Not very good, but we gotta get this test done. Unlike yesterday, we were getting 190 watts. Today, we're only getting 175, but it is what it is. That's still really good for a 200 watt panel. Current temperature of the panel is about 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, now we're gonna do some shading. So let's go ahead and shade this corner and see what happens. Okay, it cuts the juice to about half. We're still getting about 80 watts out of the panel. Cause sometimes they have diodes here in the middle splitting the panel. Let's see if that changes anything. Pretty big difference there. We're down to 51 watts. Okay, now let's just shade one corner again. Interestingly, we're back up to 100 watts. So now let's shade two sections of it. We'll shade two corners. You're now down to 30 or so watts. And of course we tested the IP68 waterproof rating. Note that most solar panels are only IP65, which means they should not be submerged. IP68 means it could withstand full submersion for up to 30 minutes. That's up to 1.5 meters of depth. Okay, we're only minutes from a thunderstorm, so I'm gonna perform this next test quickly. So under full cloud conditions, we're only getting 23 watts. You can tell there's pretty much no sun right now. All right, in she goes into my swimming pool. I'm gonna put it all the way in. I'm only gonna hold the cord so it doesn't go all the way to the bottom of the pool. I'll never be able to get it back out. So it's fully submerged right now. You can see, I'm not kidding. It is completely underwater and I'm gonna leave it here. So as you can see, the solar panel is now completely submerged in water. And I'm gonna leave it here for a couple of minutes, take it back out and show you that it still works perfectly fine. That makes this absolutely awesome for things like sailboats. All right, here it comes out of the pool. Let's go test it. So here's the wet panel. It's gotten significantly darker in the past few minutes. But the panel's still working. We're down to 10 watts, 12 watts, but it is still working just fine. This makes them ideal installations for boats. And when you go on the Bouge RV site and check these out, you'll see many mentions of people putting these on their boats. They love them on their boats because you don't have to worry about any kind of splash ruining the panel or the junction box or anything like that. Okay, let's talk about flexibility of the arch. Now they claim a 270 degree bend, but I'm pretty sure they only mean when you bend it lengthwise, because here we go. There's 270 degrees. So lengthwise, 270 degrees, not a problem. Of course, you can bend it from the inside as well. So here you go, 270 degrees. Now, when it comes to how much you can bend it widthwise, my testing shows it's a little more about 180 degrees. So this is about as far as you can go widthwise. I'd call that about 180, 190, 200 degrees. I wouldn't go beyond that. You get that point where it's just really, really difficult and I just heard something make it snap. So you probably won't wanna go any more than 180 degrees this way. So what if you need a full solar power system? Bouge RV now sells everything you need from the connectors to the wires, everything. Of course, they have the arch solar panel. They now sell multiple size pure sign inverters. They have multiple size MPPT controllers. And of course, they also sell lithium ion phosphate batteries. With these four pieces, you can actually make your own solar power station. Solar power goes into the solar MPPT controller, which is wired to the battery, and then the battery is wired to the inverter. And then on the inverter, of course, you have outlets where you can plug your stuff into. This one even has a USB port on it. So you can make a rudimentary solar generator or portable power station with just these four pieces. And in this case, this would be a 1280 watt hour system. Now, if you're interested in buying all the parts to build your system or even some of the parts, I will have links in the description of the video. Now I do have a global discount code for Bouge RV. So you can actually buy all this stuff at a pretty big discount from their website. I will have that information in the description of this video. So what do I think about the fiberglass Bouge RV arch panel? The arch is a great mid-range addition to Bouge RV's solar panel lineup. Many folks want or need a flexible solar panel but can't justify their flagship 200 watt flex panel, that Yuma SIGS. That panel is superior when it comes to flexibility, durability, shade tolerance, warranty, but it's also about double the price. The arch is probably flexible enough and durable enough for the vast majority of use cases. And since it's basically as efficient as a standard glass panel, it means you can install more watts in less space than you could with a Yuma panel. The Yuma panel's a lot less efficient than these. That's why it's a much bigger panel 
for the same watts. The Arch does have good shade tolerance with its 10 bus bar design, but it's not great. Shade larger than a sheet of panel, as we've seen in the test, will result in less than a third of rated output. Some glass panels are so bad that if you just put a leaf or a little bit of bird poo on it, it will pretty much result in a total loss of power. So in that regard, the Arch is superior than most glass panels due to its design. But if you need the best shade tolerance money can buy, you really can't beat that Yuma 6 panel. I have a separate review on that and all the other Bouge RV panels in case you were wondering. Now the Arch also isn't gonna have the higher level of output of a bifacial glass panel. Like Bouge RV's own 200 watt 16 bus bar N-type Topcon. Yeah, that's a mouthful. Which is just a few bucks cheaper. So if you really don't need a flex panel, you're better off getting that glass bifacial for a higher watt per square inch as it's 25% efficient versus the Arch's 23%. And that doesn't count the bonus you get from the backside of the Topcon bifacial panel. So there you have it. There's now a Bouge RV solar panel for everyone in every situation. So it comes down to this. If you need the highest efficiency and output per square inch, say your space is super limited and you don't care if you're using heavy glass panels, get that top con panel. If you need durability and shade tolerance with the most flexibility, get the Yuma. It's the most expensive. If you want something in between when it comes to features and price, get the Arch. Now, if you're interested in the Arch or any other Bouge RV solar panel for that matter, I'll put the links in the description of this video and it's going to take you over to a special Hobotech page on Bouge RV's website that'll give you my special discount to you for the best price you're going to get on the interwebs. And that goes for all their products because I do have a global code that works on everything they offer right down to the cables, nuts, bolts, and mounting brackets you're going to need for an install. All that information is going to be in the description below, so check out those links. I'm also going to put a link up here on the screen. It's going to take you on over to the Arch Fiberglass panel page. You can look at that directly. I'm also going to put a QR code up here on the screen. For those of you watching me on TV at home, you could scan that with your mobile device. It takes you to that same link. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Until next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box.